the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us not call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world and who have made the blood of the martyrs, Saint Andrew Kim Taigon and his companions, the most fruitful seed of Christians, grant that we may be defended by their help and profit always from their example. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can someone among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? There is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too your faith. Then we are also false witness to God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is, in, is vain. You are still in, in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for life only we have hope in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial <laughs> psalm. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, all a just suit, tend to my outcry, walk into my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their, from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Jesus journeyed from the town, from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of all evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward Chusa, Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today is the feast of Saint Andrew Kim Taigon, Paul Chang Hu Sang, and 103 other martyrs canonized by Pope John Saint Pope John Paul II in May of 1984. I'd like to uh, talk about the Catholic Church in Korea in relation to the gospel today. Many, in many countries, for example, Catholicism was brought by missionaries, missionary priests. They okay, say, for example, most of um, Latin America, the, the Catholicism was brought by Catholic missionary priests. Uh, Catholicism in the Philippines was brought by Catholic missionary priests. But it's not always the case in many Catholic countries. Say, for example, here in America, Catholicism was brought by Catholic families. You know, Catholic uh, immigrant families from Europe came to the U.S., 
brought the, with them their faith, and Catholicism continued. Of course, many priests uh, came along, but primarily by Catholic families bringing their faith and you know transmitting that faith to their to their children. The Catholic Church in Korea was different. Um, there was a man who was um, from a royal family who was a son of a kind of a, a diplomat back then, you know, the middle of, you know, uh, 17th um, century. And he went with his father, apparently, to China, as, you know, his father being a diplomat or being what, a high-ranking government official. And while in China, he encountered Christianity. He learned, you know, the various teachings about um, Catholicism, the Catechism, uh, the Bible. And when he came back to Korea, he started telling his, you know, friends, again, mostly from the top-ranking people, because he comes from that class. So that's how it all started. In fact, um, Catholicism in Korea, and mostly before the division of North and South Korea, but was really very much alive without priests. In other words, lay people were leading catechisms, teaching catechism to each other, of course, and they were baptizing each other. No priests, remember, any Christian can baptize, you know, not just the priests, you know, in cases of emergency and in missionary territories, you know, lay people can baptize as long as, you know, we baptize uh, people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In fact, as you know, uh, those in the medical field, uh, in cases of emergency, uh, nurses and doctors can baptize. So that's, um, that's a given. So the Catholic Church in Korea was, was that case. They were baptizing their children. And you know whoever they would you know whoever would convert. So by the time uh, Catholic missionary priests arrived in Korea by the middle of the 19th century, 1830s, 1850s, they were surprised that there were Catholics there. Again, without the benefit of Catholic priests. In other words, there were no mass, no masses, no confessions, no sacraments because there were no priests, and yet there were Catholics. They believed in the Holy Father, they believed in the Blessed Mother, uh, the teachings, you know, the, the creed, uh, because they were teaching the catechism of the Catholic Church. And at the height of, you know, the, the presence of these um, Catholics, you know, again, mostly, in fact, uh, there was there's a, a story about a place where uh, most of these Catholics were gathered um, and at the height of the persecution, it was raided because it was suspected to be like a gambling den or something. Like, you know, people must be doing something illegal in that place. And so it was raided by the government, only to find the top-ranking government officials there, most who were Catholics. So, again, this is uh, important because um, the, the persecution today, you know, at the height of the persecution, you know, with the Catholic presence, already with, you know, the coming of, of the priests and formalizing kind of the Catholic Church, now the Catholics would were able to receive the sacraments, uh, more and more people were becoming Catholics. And Catholicism being kind of, or Christianity being kind of opposed to an Oriental philosophy, like, you know, Confucianism, uh, for example, or Buddhism, it's a totally different worldview. You know, the way people look at the world, look at reality. So there was kind of a conflict, you know, this group of Christians believe in something else. And so they were always suspected to be something bad or wrong. So that caused the persecution. Christianity was persecuted. Christians were persecuted. And that, that day, in that uh, time, you know, uh, more than, again, more than 100, at least during the time of uh, St. Andrew Kim Taigon, St. Andrew was the first Korean Catholic priest. So he was, he was kind of leading uh, the Catholic community um, there. So, and Paul Chong Ha-sang, together with him, was a lay catechist. So that was the, the martyrdom of uh, the Koreans. And today... Currently, um, there is no data in North Korea, uh, 
it is believed probably North Korea, more or less 5,000 or so. Because North Korea, um, still um, no one can practice any faith whatsoever. But the, it is believed that there are some Catholics, they say probably around 5,000 um, Catholics in North Korea. In South Korea, more than 50% do not believe in God or do not, you know, affiliate themselves with any religious denomination, more than 50%. But it's interesting because 11% of South Korea are Catholics. And in a country where mostly non-believers, 11% is, you know, their Protestants probably would be almost 20%. But 11% Protestants of many of all the different denominations combined. But the Catholic Church is the biggest as one denomination. 11%, you know, of more than almost 6 million Catholics. And all of that, there are more than 10,000 religious sisters, nuns, and there are more than 5,000 priests. In other words, there's a ratio of almost like one priest for every 1,000 Catholics. I wish we have that here. You know, uh, we have one priest for 10,000 Catholics. Um, so that's how many um, Catholic priests are there. In fact, um, if you notice even here in, in the US, um, the Korean Catholic immigrants are producing Catholic priests. Even here in the Dyson Brackville Center, we know that we have um, a couple of Korean Catholic priests from Catholic families who migrated from Korea to the U.S. So this is, again, uh, this important because of the readings we have today. We are talking about uh, the ministry of the 12 apostles. But if we also notice in the gospel specifically today, we are not only talking of the ministry of the 12 apostles, but specifically Christ talks about the ministry of the women. Remember, during that time, culturally, um, women were really non essential. You, you know, they were not counted as something very important or significant in society. But for the gospel to mention even the names of these women, it must have been very important. A recognition of the significant contribution of women in the ministry of the church in the early years of Christianity. But one thing also important here is not only that uh, the women were cited as uh, some of the co-ministers, evangelizers, um, women who were from affluent families who provided for them out of the resources. They were not only helpers, they really spend money for the ministry. Um, again, how important is this? We go back to the church in, in Korea. The church in Korea survived, just like uh, most of the Catholic Catholicism in, in Japan uh, during that time. It survived even with out priests for many years because priests were not allowed. Priests were persecuted, nuns were persecuted. Catholicism survived because of lay people, very active lay movement. I think it's important because it is precisely a recognition of our contribution to the Catholic Church. Because we all know the Church does not depend on me. It's almost like saying, if I'm not here, the Catholic Church will die. The Catholic Church will survive without me. Catholic Church will, will not survive without you. Because what I do is 8 o'clock in the morning, I celebrate Mass, I speak for uh, one hour of homily, uh, but that would, that's about it. After that, you go home. I don't follow you home. I don't you know, evangelize to your children, to your grandchildren, to your neighbor. You do. And that's how Catholicism progresses you your contribution is very important no one can say oh our father we're simple ordinarily people we, you know all we do is just come to mass it's not true your contribution is very 
essential. Your ministry is just as effective and essential as our ministry. My ministry is different. Just as your ministry is different, but it doesn't invalidate the significance and importance of your ministry, which again, the gospel today emphasizes and which the feast today uh, beautifully also points out. That for the Catholic Church to survive, this Church of God, it does not only depend on me. Neither does it only totally depend on you, but it depends on all of us doing our own parts in the best way that we can. No one can do everything just by himself. And the church also needs all of us together. We all together work for this uh, church that we all love. So in our Mass today, we pray for uh, all the places all over the world, especially those who are still um, experiencing a lot of persecution. Um, you know, uh, for us, it's, it's so easy. You know, um, we just have to wake up in the morning and drive to church, uh, come to church here. Um, no one prevents us from coming to church. Um, we go back home. We can pray. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier for us. Uh, not in many places, like in North Korea, definitely. Uh, it's really a matter of life and death. You know, they cannot openly practice uh, their faith, in, just as in many other places where um, Christianity and Catholicism are still considered as illegal. So we pray for them, that may the Lord continue to strengthen them, that in the midst of persecution and prohibition uh, in many uh, places, may the Lord continue to strengthen those Catholic families, that as they continue to live their lives, hopefully the good lives that they live will inspire more people to look into Catholicism from a different perspective, that Catholicism is not a threat to any society. But Catholicism can contribute a lot to the welfare of society. Calling to mind our needs, let us now offer our prayers to our merciful Father with one voice. We pray for the church and her missionary zeal. May God continue to kindle the flame of his holy work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who hold positions of power in the world. May God grant them the fortitude to always seek the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who live in poverty. May God in his mercy provide for the needs and grant them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for a faith community. May God inspire our efforts to share the good news of the gospel with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all who have died in Christ. With the joy, with the joy of the saints at the wedding feast of the Lamb, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and today we pray in a very special way for Marie and Peter Lipolis, for Father Jean Marie Cassesi, and today is also the death anniversary of my dad, uh, Felipe Igargo Sr. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, those who promise to pray for, as always, we pray for those who are ill. May the Lord, in His great love, perform the miracle of healing for them. Uh, for everyone who's going through difficulties and challenges in life, especially those struggling to provide for their families, we pray for them in a very special way today. For the safety and protection of our families and their loved ones, and for those celebrating this Eucharist with us all over the world, we pray with you and for you. And for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, all goodness comes from you. Look with kindness upon the prayers we bring before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread and wine. Blessed be God and
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine work of human hands, it will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us not pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory to his name. Proud of the Lord. Amen. Look with favor, Almighty God, on the offerings of your people, and through the intercession of the blessed martyrs, grant that we ourselves may become a sacrifice acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and in our feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the two fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis and Pope, John and Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Andrew Kim Taigon, Paul Chong Hasang, and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> At the Savior's command and form the divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the death of us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, for every evil and gracefully grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other this sign. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, we are not worthy of the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nerds to the food of the valiant, as we celebrate the blessed martyrs, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that clinging faithfully to Christ, we may labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Be God to with him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, that the power of God cast into the head of the Savior. And all evil spirits that foul upon the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Remember, the most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored their help, or sought their intercession, was left for thee. His power and his confidence we find to thee. O Virgin of Virgins and mine, to thee to be found before they resign, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word of Thy name, despise not the petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Our Lady of Lords, Saint Andrew Kim Taigun and Saint Paul Chong Hassan, have a beautiful day to everyone. <coughs>